Right, so we're moving on to question six now. Um, given us various electropotentials there, and the first thing I want us to do is define the term standard electropotential, including all the standard conditions in our answer. So for our definition, it's the EMF of a half cell combined with uh, a standard hydrogen half cell or hydrogen electrode. Standard conditions are 298 Kelvin, all solutions being one mole per decimeter cubed, and pressure being 100 kilopascals. Right, they then want me to complete a circuit with uh, for cells three and four. So I've done that, uh, as you can see, um, we've got using a platinum electrode for uh, number three, because there's no solid metal that I can use as the electrode. Um, obviously both the vanadium three plus and the vanadium two plus would be at one mole per decimeter cubed. Um, uh, for cell number four, uh, I've got copper that I can use as the electrode and my copper two plus eight, which was also be at one mole per decimeter cubed. Obviously got my salt bridge here and my voltmeter connect it to. If I look at two, I can see that the copper would be the positive electrode because that's the most positive one. So the electrons would go this way from the negative electrode, which would be vanadium, to the positive electrode, which is copper. Uh, one other thing they actually asked is for me to show the electrons. Uh, so the electrons would be going that way, which I've shown on the arrow. The ions um, would be going across the salt bridge, like so. Uh, on the next question, they want me to actually give the the potential that I would see. Um, the potential would be the difference between these two readings here. So it would be 0 0.34 minus minus 0 0.26. So my potential would equal 0 0.60 volts. For the next question, they want me to... Uh, first of all, define oxidising agent and reducing agent. So an oxidising agent um, accepts electrons um, and increases the oxidation number of another species. Reducing agent adds electrons um, and decreases the oxidation number of another species. It then wants me using chromium 3 plus, and remember I've got chromium 3 plus there, and also chromium 3 plus there. To illustrate uh, these definitions, um, uh, by the redox systems one to six, using overall equations. So let's give that a go. Well, if I look at redox system number one, I can see that this one is more negative than number two. I want chromium to go that way, chromium that way is being reduced and that means the aluminium will go that way because it would be oxidised. Um, now I'd need to times equation 2 by 3 to make it balance. So this one would be 3Cr3 plus plus aluminium goes to Al3 plus plus 3Cr2+. And hopefully you can see that the chromium here is being reduced and the aluminium there is being oxidised. So I'm looking for an equation now. Um, obviously I'm going to have chromium going that way. Chromium going that way is chromium being oxidised. Um, for that to go happen I must be looking for a uh, uh, redox system which is more positive than that one so this is the only one that I've got so that would go that way um, this one would need to be times by two because I've got three electrons there and six electrons there so if I do that I will end up with um, 2 FeO4 2 minus plus 16H plus, plus 2Cr3 plus, plus 7H2O, 
going to give me 2 Fe 3 plus plus 8 H2O plus Cr2O7 2 minus plus 14 H plus and I can obviously simplify that down um, so I end up with 2 H plus there because that cancels with that and the 8 7 waters disappear from that side and I end up with just one water that side like so okay question 8 then so this is obviously transition metal chemistry so the first thing they want me to do is identify these complexes the first one is nickel 2 dissolved in water um, containing a 6 coordinate complex iron so um, it's going to be nickel surrounded by 6 water ligands there like so the oxidation state hasn't changed so it's still going to be 2 plus solid D is when I add hydroxide ions so that's going to be nickel hydroxide and then finally is when I add cyanide ions um, it gives me a four coordinate complex that contains only nickel carbon and nitrogen so there aren't any water molecules there at all so it's going to be nickel uh, with four cyanides got to be careful the charge here um, cyanide is of course Cn minus nickel is two plus um, so I've got nickel two four negative ligands to give me an overall charge of two minus so I've now got to write equations for the formation of D um, so it's going to be nickel 2 plus aqueous plus uh, 2 hydroxide ions um, they're also dissolved in water aqueous to give me the nickel hydroxide precipitate and that is a uh, precipitation reaction formation of E from complex C okay so I start off with my nickel surrounded by six water ligands two plus I add in four cyanide ligands and it's going to give me my complex iron which I've just popped up there two minus uh, plus six H2O um, and then what type of reaction is that? That is, of course, ligand substitution. Okay, so now looking at um, some gold chemistry. Um, so looking at the complex iron uh, with two cyanide ions around a gold iron, a bond angle of 180 degrees, what shape will it be? It will be, of course, linear. Um, using oxidation numbers show that a redox reaction has taken place. Well, the gold um, has started in oxidation zero, um, and in this complex iron, it is plus one. Remember, each cyanide iron is Cn minus, so gold must be plus one for the overall charge to be minus one. Um, it uh, reacts with oxygen to form hydroxide ions. Um, for oxygen, oxygen has obviously been reduced from 0 to minus 2 in hydroxide. Okay, well this is a lot of work for two marks, but let's see how it goes. So I'm starting off with gold. I'm adding to it cyanide ions, so Cn minus, and it's also reacting with oxygen. O2 and also water H2O and it is making my complex iron Au Cn2 minus plus hydroxide ions right so let's look at the oxidation uh, changes oxidation states so I've gone from zero here to plus one here uh, cyanide hasn't changed oxidation state nor is anything in water but the oxygen has gone from zero here 
to minus 2 there. So, going from there to there is a change of plus 1. Going from there to there is a change of minus 2. So, first of all, I need to make sure I have got um, double the amount of gold. However, you'll notice is actually O2, so it is actually 2 times minus 2, which is minus 4. So I need to put in 4 AU and have 4 there as well. Then it becomes a little bit more straightforward. I've got 8 cyanides overall, so I need an 8 there. To get my hydroxides to work, I need to have four hydroxides there um, and two waters there and I think that's all balanced. Okay so I need to find the other half equation now um, so let's just go through this and see what I've got to add. So I've got my cyanide there, um, my ammonium is all sorted, my carbonate is sorted there. Um, now I have got three waters there but only two waters there. So, I'm going to start off with ClO. Um, I've got two there, uh, so I must be making a water as well for it to cancel out um, in this for this half equation there. Um, I have got over here two electrons, so I need two electrons this side as well. Uh, I've got two H plus here, which don't appear here at all. So I need to get rid of that by putting two H plus there for it to cancel out. Um, and then the final thing is a Cl minus there. Right, so the first one that gives me a lot of information, but let's come back to that. First of all, electronic configuration of copper in uh, this uh, compound here. Uh, copper to methanoate. Obviously the charge on the methanoate ion is minus one. For this to be neutral overall, copper must be in a plus two oxidation state, which gives me 3D9. For copper one plus, it's going to have one more electron to give me 3D10. Um, so for a suitable copper compound for step one, step one I'm reacting it with meth uh, methanoic acid. So I'm obviously looking for some sort of base uh, uh, obvious one would be probably copper 2 hydroxide, um, nice and easy, uh, so CuOH2, I'm then going to add uh, uh, methanoic acid, um, which is going to be HCOOH, that's going to give me the complex, uh, the compound rather, copper methanoate uh, plus water and I need two of those to get it to work and also two waters as well let's just tidy that up a little bit uh, right so ionic equation for step three now um, so step three is telling me I've got copper two plus ions uh, react to form um, react with iodide ions to form a precipitate uh, of um, copper 1 iodide, CuI plus iodine like so. It wants state symbols, so let's put those in. Um, all of these are going to be aqueous apart from the precipitate of copper iodide. And then you're going to need uh, to get this to balance two of those, two of those, and four of those. Uh, step four, student adds a solution to observe the endpoint. What would I add? I'd add starch for that. And what would the colour change be? It would be from a bluey black colour to colourless. So they now want me to determine X. So um, this is obviously on the next page, but it's easier if we look at this page to work it out. The first thing you always start with is they have given you a volume and a concentration there. So I am going to work out the moles of 
um, S2, O3, 2 minus. Now that's going to be the volume times the concentration divided by a thousand and you will end up with that being 9.87 times 10 to the minus 4 moles. Okay, so we now need to relate this to copper ions. If you look at this equation here, two thiosulfates make one iodine molecule. One iodine molecule makes two copper ions. So the ratio between copper to thiosulfate is one to one. So moles of copper, two plus, is going to be the same. 9.87 times 10 to the minus 4. And that is in 250 centi in sorry in 25 centimeters cubed. So originally I had that 25 was in 250. So I need to times this number by 10 to find out how much was in 250. So in, uh, sorry, in yeah, 250, I have 9.87 times 10 to the minus three moles of copper two plus ions. Now, that must be the same as the number of moles of copper two methanoate, because in every one copper two methanoate, there's only one copper ion. So I can say I've got the same number of moles of um, my CuHOOO2 dot XH2O. So now I can find the molar mass. The molar mass is going to be the mass which uh, they have found here, 2.226 divided by the moles, which is 9.87 times 10 to the minus 3. And that comes to 225.5 grams per mole. Now obviously that is of the whole thing. From my 225.5, I need to take away the molar mass of copper to methanoate. Now the molar mass of copper to methanoate, so just that thing there, if you add that up that comes to 153.5. So I am left over just of water must be 72. And if you do 72 divided by 18, which is the molar mass of water, you get 4. And therefore, x is equal to 4.